What we're going to do this video is we're going to take this out of the box Neo Dig Quad that we just unboxed and we're going to hook it up. See, it works. Well, I, th I think I know it works. We already did trial runs and stuff like that. So anyway, what kind of ESP do you want on there? Do you want a board antenna ESP? Do you want an external antenna ESP? Or do you want to go full, full tilt and go to the Ethernet connected version? Well, okay, Ethernet, 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 Ethernet external. Oh, there's more externals. Okay, Ethernet, okay, sure, Ethernet it is. So then uh, I take the Ethernet ESP32, but I don't plug it in yet. Because, well, we don't plug it in yet because if you receive your Queen LED ESP, no, 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 Queen LED Dig Quad ABE, you will get it like this. So with the Ethernet board on top of it. The first thing you'll want to do, well, you can turn it on without anything connected, but you want to see LEDs, of course. So the first thing you want to do is basically take this top board and pull it off. So you can access these screw terminals because those are the data screw terminals. Now I'm going to make my life easier. I'm going to borrow some uh, some pigtail wires from here. One moment. Now this isn't a perfect analog to how you would receive the boards. Because if you receive the boards, they will be pre-flashed with a firmware that is already Ethernet enabled and has uh, some or all of the outputs configured. In this case, because I'm using a new ESP32 ABE board and a DIG quad, it, it'll have WLED on there, but not configured. So we'll do flashing and stuff like that too. So it's really a fresh start. And you know, it's a live stream, so I shouldn't do this, but let's see if we can put the newest beta version on there <laughs> and uh, see if things explode. Who knows? If uh, people are wondering, this is a Xiaomi Wo stick, and especially for terminals like this, it's excellent. Okay, so I'm adding some of these uh, pigtails that uh, for data, for positive, and for negative. Uh, most of you will know this, but red is often positive. Green with digital LEDs is mostly the data wire. And then white is the negative. Okay, let's do a second one. Now you might notice that I'm using terminals one here and terminal three. The reason for that is is that terminal one and two are shared by a fuse, and two or uh, three and four are shared by a fuse. And in this case, I well, I kind of don't want that. So that's why I just use the other terminals. I was going to say, we're going to hook up three LED strips. We are, uh, but one of them is going to be one of the load bars I made in one of the previous live stream. Remember these? So we're going to hook up that one too, uh, but that one has its own separate wires. And then I thought it'd be fun. I have two types of LED strip here. I have WS2812B and I have WS2812E. And this is basically the eco variant. That is also, well, these are all BTF, you can see that, BTF lighting. Yes, using affiliate links is always very much appreciated. Doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me out. Okay, so now we've connected all the wires. The next step we can take is putting the ESP on the board. And especially on a dig quad, you can see the first one that lines up. And then just push it in, and that's it. It's in. No worries. Now, this stream isn't going to do the perfect power injection this is just going to hook them up using a standard jst connector uh, that's okay ish for five meter 300 leds depends on what you're going to do with it um, if you want to drive them at high output levels you should uh, inject five volt leds at the front and at the back uh, but for simplicity's sake we're not going to do that right now so if you'd hook up 10 meters like this in a single string, you'd hook up front, middle, and then, well, you know, middle, and then the back of this one too. So every five meters, it needs a connection, front and back. Uh, but that's for five volt LED. And I chose these strips because they're all kind of different uh, to show you, well, different scenarios and how to configure that in WLED in a minute. So we're hooking this up. And we're hooking that one up and that's pretty easy we're not going to do power injection stuff like that now i already plugged this in we're gonna i'm gonna pull it off again 
Because, uh, as I said, I don't know which firm. Well, I do know which firmware is on here currently, but it's not configured anyway. So I thought, let's make this extra exciting <laughs> and install the newest current uh, WLED beta. And we're going to take my board as Ethernet again because we wanted the newest beta. beta. So let's just, you know, flash it again. Oh, okay. Uh, install WLED, please. Uh, yes, that's fine. Cool. Erasing. This will take two minutes. Interesting. Install complete. Nice. Oh, it wait. It's asking me to configure network. Okay. Well, let's do this. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we're now connected to WLED over Wi-Fi, but we kind of want to use it over Ethernet because we have this Ethernet port here. So what we can do, we go to configure and then Wi-Fi setup. And then down here, we can select Ethernet type and you select the Quinn LED ESP32 and you hit save and connect. And well, that'll enable the Ethernet port. But then of course, I also need an Ethernet cable. So let's do that. And there we go, blinky blinky. Oh. Uh, let me try and show you, there we go. We have blinking ethernet. So if I now check my router logs, I can see that it got an IP on my local network. Let me go there. And there we go. We now have um, WLED connected over ethernet. So using the ethernet version is really simple. You either connect to it over Wi-Fi or either connect it to your network or as an access point. And then you go to Wi-Fi settings, you select Quinn LED ESP32 Ethernet version, and that's it. Ethernet becomes active and you can access it and you got 100% signal strength. <laughs> that's always good. Okay, so let's turn this off because we're still connected to USB. Uh, let's put it on the board. Uh, make sure to line up the pins so that you're not one pin off, basically. But it should be pre pretty easily. It only goes in... Well, I guess it goes in multiple ways, but don't, don't try that. Uh, and then we need power. Uh, as a power supply, we're going to be using a 5-volt power supply because your power supply... Well, let, me, let me do this on the face cam. The voltage of your power supply always needs to match the voltage of your LEDs. So in this case, we're using SK6812 and two types of WS2812B. Those are all five volt LEDs. So you need to have a five volt power supply. If you have 12 volt LEDs, you need a 12 volt power supply. And if you have 24 volt LEDs, like I did a recent video on, you need a 24 volt power supply. Now there is an exception. If you're using a 24 volt power supply and then five volt buck converters later down the line, you can use a 24 volt power supply with five volt LEDs, but the board isn't going to do that for you. You need external buck converters that are actually bigger than the board <laughs> to do that. So power vo voltage in is always voltage out. This uh, behemoth from uh, Meanwell, and this is a UHP 505, and that can do 80 amps at 5 volt. <laughs> now, that's an insane amount, and it's more than I'd actually recommend running through the board. Um, but, you know, we've been testing with it, and it's an excellent power supply. Kind of expensive. That one power supply is about 100 bucks. But it is a 500 or 400 watt power supply that is passively cooled. So, kind of see why it's worth the price. And it has an active PFC, and it's an awesome power supply. Okay, let's, uh, let's move this Ethernet cable out of the way while we, you know, add the power cables. So the terminals now don't have a color anymore, but the positions are the same. This is positive. This is negative. Don't reverse it. Well, actually, you can reverse it. Nothing should happen because there's protection circuits for that. But I'd still rather you did. <laughs> Oh, uh, Andy, I just caught your question by chance. Yes, if you want to replace one of the fuses on here with a 10 amp version, uh, those are standard car ATO size style fuses. Uh, don't try to buy the cheap Chinese crap because they use aluminium and the good ones use, I, I believe, zinc. 
Uh, so unless that's listed, don't buy them. Uh, and then, yes, you, you're allowed to you, uh, go up to 10 amps uh, for a single fuse socket and or for a single terminal. I don't recommend using a 15 amp fuse in one of these fuse sockets. You can on the DIG Uno, but I don't re recommend on here. The official specifications then also should be taken into account. In total, you're allowed to run 30 amps continuous up to 50 amps peak. Now, as we've tested in recent live streams, especially this version, these all come in two OZ, and even the, the prototype version with one OZ was easily able to handle 40 amps continuous. Uh, so your mileage may vary there. I'll, I'll basically guarantee it'll do 30 amps continuous, and that's even been tested in hot chambers for eight hours straight, and you know what kind of things. In reality, it'll likely run much more because um, the design is able to handle that. But, you know, I have to set the specifications somewhere. Now, uh, these are 12 gauge wires and these were made during a live stream where I showed how not to crimp ferrules and how to crimp ferrules. These are how not to crimp ferrules because you shouldn't be seeing this wire here. But we did so so we could test voltage drop and other things. And this is how it should look. No wires visible and a little bit of wire visible here uh, at the crimping point, basically. So you just separate them um, like that and insert them into the terminal. Now, these are fully shielded terminals, so no worries about hitting something behind it or something like that. That should be no problem. Right. So now we have the LED bar connected here on a... Uh, LED 3 or port 3 and then we have the WS2812B which are uh, 50 uh, or 30 LEDs per meter so 150 and then we have the WS2812E which are 60 LEDs per meter or 300 in total. Uh, so let's turn the board on. Okay let's uh, see if it explodes. No it does not. Uh, regarding power LEDs there is a power LED uh, on the dig board over here. That'll show you if the dig board is getting power. And then there's a power LED on the ESP32 module. And there's a power LED on the um, Ethernet module top hat, basically, too. Okay. Uh, well, actually, we're all get, already getting pretty good success because these LEDs have turned orange. That means those are likely on port or LED channel 1 because that is GPO16. And that is actually the default in WLED nowadays. So if we go to the WLED page over here, uh, we should actually already, yeah, we can change the color. Yeah, that works great. So let's go to configure and configure this mishmash of LEDs we have over here. So if we go to LED preferences, we'll leave this alone for now. Uh, we said, okay, uh, GPO 16, which is LED channel one, has 150 LEDs. Then we have a second channel, which is also WS28X, and that has 300 LEDs. And on a dig quad, that is GPO3. Now, how do I know it's GPO3? If you go to quinlED.info, and you go to digitally addressable LEDs, and over there you have the dig quad and all its articles, one of the articles is a pinout guide. If you click on the pinout guide, you see that LED1, LED2, LED3, and LED4 has GPO16, GPO3, GPO1, and GPO4 if you're using an ESP32. So, going back to WLED, we see that the first one is indeed 16, then we have 3 that had 300 LEDs connected, and then we also need GPO1, which actually has SK6812, and it has 144. So let's save that real quick. And if you look at the table, you see it's actually working, but it's very dim. Now the reason for that is that the brightness limiter is still on. Now you could go to the trouble of actually calculating that, but in our case, we're just gonna turn it off. Oh, <laughs> and immediately the LEDs are less dim. And now we should be able to, let me try and show you the bar too see if it's on screen yes 
uh, we should be able to change the colors of all of them. Let me show you over here. And all of them should change at the same time. Cool. So that's a very basic configuration of a dig quad. Uh, there we go. But still, we have 150 LEDs here. We have 300 LEDs here and 144 LEDs here. All running through a dig quad. And that looks fine. Let's see if we can do an effect, basically. Uh, I like the Paletti effect, for instance. Yeah. That's working great. But then... Now, all of these are acting like they're one big LED string. And, well, likely in this scenario, you wouldn't want that because, well, this more looks like three LED strings than one. And let's go here. Uh, where was it again? Make a segment for each output. Right. Save. You have to reboot. Let's reboot. Reboot. Think. Right. Oh, cool. So we rebooted. it. And now we do indeed have three segments, which correspond to my, to our three outputs. So let's have the first one selected, and let's uh, make that, I don't know, pinkish. And then let's select the second one, and let's make that bluish. And then let's select the third one and make that, uh, I don't know, greenish? Well, it was already green. Yellowish? Yeah, that works. Cool. So now it makes segments based on the output uh, channels you have. That's cool. Uh, but let's do some uh, different effects. I don't know. Let's do BPM on the bar here. Oh, yeah. And uh, then let's go to segments. And let's deselect this one and reselect that one. And let's do uh, bouncing balls. Or oh, no, nah, that's, that's boring. Uh, this one? Uh, boring too. Yes, nice. And then let's deselect this one and select that one. And let's do Fireworks 1D. Cool. So now we have three LED strips connected. Three different types, actually. 150 LEDs, 300 LEDs, RGBW SK, SK6812. They are all 5 volt. And they're all doing their own thing over ethernet on a single board. Hey.